Hello everyone. Welcome to Essence of Eclectic, where the crafts are so fun you can't stick to only one. And I'm not sticking to only one. Today we're doing some Kumihimo. Well, I'm doing it, you're watching. I'm going to make a bracelet like this, which is stiff, it has a wire core, and it's braided around the outside and has a nice little twirly on one side and a loop on the other, in case you want to hang something off it. Right, so we're going to need some cord and a disc. This is nylon satin cord. I have four lengths of it, each about 160 centimeters long. So, and some wire. This is two millimeter aluminium wire. And it's a bit bendy because I cut it off a, a coil. And some sharp scissors to cut things with. And a wire cutter to cut wire with so that we can trim the wire if we need to. And a pair of pliers to hold the wire steady if we need to. Some round nose pliers to make the, the nice round coil to start it off anyway. And uh, what is this called? It's not a bulldog clip, it's a folding clip. Um, and uh, bit of scrap string and because our cord is nylon satin some matches a candle and a thimble we'll put that aside for later so what do we do well I want to measure this the size of my wrist so that's what the scrap cord is for. Uh, so I'm wrapping it around, holding it there, uh, not too tight. Got that there, and I will s snip this. This is just to make it easy to measure things. So we'll put that aside, don't lose it. And then we take the wire. Now this wire is uh, yes so it's a little more than three times my wrist circumference circumference I'm doing this because I want to make sure that there's enough wire you could probably use less so the first thing you do is you take the wire and then you carefully bring the ends together so that you're bending it in half and then you put your finger in the loop and pull. That's to, to try to make sure that it's actually bent in the middle. It's not quite, but right. So we have this loop. Then we cross those over, you put your finger there so that you pushing your loop smaller and smaller. So we have our loop and we have our things. Now we're going to be twisting this and the way to twist this properly is to push one side down and push the other side up. Ooh. Yeah. 
I'm getting this in my way. And the reason I'm holding it with pliers is because it's easier to hold it with pliers than not. Yeah, it's got all twisted. I mean, not straight. So, holding it with pliers. The other way around. So, push one down and the other up. Um, this is so that they're both evenly twisted. Because um, you don't want it so that one is going around the other. We want it even. And let's see how long this is because we want it to be as long as the circumference of... and it isn't quite. Few more twists to go. And a few more twists to go. <laughs> measure that again. Okay, so that's about right. So we have our wire and yes we deliberately have bits sticking out the end. You'll see why. So now we take our four cords line their ends up and come on line their ends up don't pull them apart and put them through the loop ah that's what the loop is for and then you pull it through until the ends meet I know you can't see the whole of what I'm doing here but we have our ends and they're more or less so we pull that along and orient it like that and that's what this is for so we just clip this to keep them even temporarily so we're sticking this up and we have to put our cords on the disc so what I do is take out one pair at a time and Whip the other ones back and so putting one in 31 and the other in 16 and we take the other pair of blue cords and we put that in 17 and one. Nye, nye, nye. Come on. And we take the purple cords and put them across like so. Only it's all twisted up. So I'm going to 
untwist it. So that's crossed over. What's the matter, you? This is not right. This is just demonstrating that nobody's perfect. Okay, that's what we want. We want that crossed over in the middle. So we'll put that there and that there. This one here and this one here. And then we want the, the uh, lavender ones crossed over in the middle. So we'll do that. So now they're all crossed over and that kind of holds the wire in position until we can lock it. And we lock it by just doing the normal braid. So we go. right hand down, left hand up, or however it is that you do it. Right hand down, left hand up, right hand down, left hand up, right hand down, left hand up, and it's starting to stick up. So we keep going with your uh, traditional hard round braid. So you don't have to do it in this pattern. This is just an eight strand regular spiral. You can use whatever colors you want with whatever eight strand pattern you want. I'm just doing the simple spiral because it's simple for demonstration purposes and because it looks nice. Well, it does. That's part of the fun of the Kumihimo braiding, is you make these lovely spiral braid colours. So, you keep going for another several inches. And disentangle your cord and now we've got this done for about a bit over an inch and what I find helpful is to push that, sort of stretch it out. Um, see, now it's even more. Um, that's because we, we don't, it's, it's best if the, if the cord has a bit more tension than, than slack. So we've just basically push the wire down into the cord and we can do that because the cord is attached firmly to the loop. Um, so it's not like the wire is going to push out through the end or anything. And then we continue.
so we're a little further along and then so we just push that in. I mean it's only gonna push the wire in by a millimeter or two but it's it's a good thing to do. So we're nearly done and I'm lifting this up higher because well I've got wire here and we will keep on going and going and going. Please excuse if this is blurry or something, I can't tell. I don't have any of these fancy monitors that some people have with their camera set up. I am just a simple, inexpensive setup consisting of a mobile phone on a shelf with a hole in it. The shelf has the hole. I made the hole. The hole was put there on purpose. And it's my shelf and I can do with it what I want. And right now we have some nice daylight. So I certainly want to take advantage of that. And by nice daylight I mean overcast. Because bright sunshine is really not very good for filming in because the shadows are too much. So we have got up to where the little branches fork. So what we do is we look for whichever pair of cords is um, furthest underneath and that's this pair but they're not really oriented right so I'll just do one more stitch and then it will be this pair so you take that pair and then you tie a square knot over the fork of wire and tie it tightly. This will hold everything in place so we can take it off the disc. So now we want to cover up all the cords nice and neatly. So that's the top pair, that's the next top pair, you say, why do you want to know that? And the bottom pair is those blue ones. Okay, because, right, that's the top pair. We've tied a knot with it. So we will take the next top pair. We pull down all the other ones. And we make a half square knot of the macrame type, which is you put... And you can go in either direction. I'm not, I'm not into saying left hand, right hand. You put one over the core. You take the other one, you put it over the first one, behind everything, and you pull it up through the loop made by the first one. And then you pull both strands while holding these down, which is why I'm using my little finger. To hold them down and you pull that and then just pull a little bit so we're just sort of getting a bit tight then we do that again with the same cords 
over the core, over the first behind, up through the loop. And then we pull it. Now, we remember that the other two lavender chords were the next chords down. So we put those out and pull those down. So we are, then we do another knot in the same direction, covering over all the chords. And why am I changing over the chords? Because I want all the colours. It would be possible to just do it with one set of chords, but I don't want to. Now, of course, I can't remember which pair of blue chords was the bottom one. And partly it's because this way I can be sure that I'm not going to run out of chord. And it doesn't really matter. Not really. Anyway, I'm doing it this way. Just so long as you cover up everybody. And then the last pair of blue chords. Pull it tight. And straighten up how you've bent it while you were working. So, push it up. And then this is where the candle comes in. And you can only do this with um, uh, this uh, plastic nylon cord. It's the same stuff that paracord's made of. Um, because it will melt in a candle flame. But uh, for other types of cord, you can put uh, white glue or super glue when you when you cut it. So. Just some short ends, and you say, why have you got a thimble? Ah, that's my cunning. Now you put this above the flame, not in it, so that it melts a bit, and then you squish it with the thimble, so that it's squished in and solidifies there. And again, above above the flame but not in it and it just melts a bit and then you go squish and end up making it too loose okay pull that tighter 
melted a bit more and go squish so then you take your sharp scissors and this is why they have to be sharp and small because you're going to cut them right up next to where they come out need the candle anymore and we just pull that down a little bit to um, hide those ends and we have a thing which looks a bit like a, a butterfly body and then we say um, that's a bit long, maybe we'll cut it shorter, and I didn't want it to be too short, so we'll cut it to there, that still gives us plenty. Yes, I like measuring things with my body parts, you got a problem with that? should be the same. Right. And it's aluminium so it was very soft and very easily cut. That's one of the re another reason why we twist the aluminium is to work harden it so that it's stiffer here than it is here which is much not stiff. So we're now going to make some nice little spirals or big spirals as this may be. And take the other pliers and squish that down. And then we hold them with the pliers and then push. That's a nice way of getting a tight spiral. Then we do the same on the other side. Yes, I've done it so they're spiraling in opposite directions you can do it so they're spiraling in the same way and then we just push them down so that they're all nice and decorative and pretty and we take something like a mug and bend our bracelet around it to get your initial curve. It's obviously not going to be the right um, size, but it does give you a nice curve. And then you just bend it a bit more. And there you are. It's... There, a bit twisty, and you can make it bigger or smaller, and just 
squish it around your wrist and you have a nice bracelet that fits your wrist or fits someone else's wrist or whatever. So I hope you enjoyed that, found it useful. I'm going to twist that a bit. There. And if you like this, then please click like. It does help. You know, I'm not going to take these likes for granted. And if you want to see more, then subscribe to my wonderful channel. Hello, my 29 subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.